According to the report, the cloud computing market in Poland 2021, market analysis and development forecast for 2021 and 2026, published in December 2021, the value of the cloud computing market was growing in Poland in 2021 and the rate of more than 30% year to year. The forecast assumed that in 2022, the value of the cloud computing market will reach 3 billion zlotys. Today, my guest is Christian Wenzel, head Eastern Europe at Snowflake. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to be here. Okay, before we start, maybe can you just give us a brief introduction about the company and then we will move to the cloud computing market in Poland as it is growing. So let's look for the opportunities and the details behind the success. Sure. So um, Snowflake has been founded in 2012 actually by two French and a Polish guy, Marcin Zukowski, who is still involved with the company. Um, and the predicament at that time was um, the two French guys came from Oracle, we need to move Exadata into the cloud, right? And what are the promises of the cloud? The promises of the cloud are security, scalability, um, price performance, etc. So they started with, um, they started on a whiteboard to think about how they can do it. 2015, they launched the product. At that time, we were the data warehouse to the cloud. We came a long way since then. And from 2015 to now, we signed up some 6,000 customers are um, across are active across the globe and I think in, in more than 40 countries. And the data warehouse for the cloud developed to the data cloud. So we enable companies across the globe, share data, run analytics faster and make more use of what they have. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in 2021, last year, you opened your office in Warsaw. Why the decision to move your office or to choose Warsaw for such an operations? <sighs> So there are, there are multiple reasons, I think. So first is, I think we are the most Polish Silicon Valley company out there. Like I said, we have a um, Polish co-founder, mm -hmm. the head of our engineering, Jagosz Szajkowski, um, is Polish as well, even though he lives in San Mateo. Um, and even I do have a Polish wife. So, <laughs> okay, always Polish uh, traits. <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's, there's a certain emotional connection definitely mm -hmm. to the country. The other thing is, um, for the engineering hub that's here, um, there's an amazing talent pool within, within Poland. So I think that was one of the reasons why Greg decided to open the engineering hub here in Warsaw. Mm -hmm. I'm not responsible for the engineering side of the house. I'm responsible for the sales and the go-to-market. Mm -hmm. um, we are working with Poland since roughly three years, but more or less in, in a stealth mode. So we had, um, we had one colleague trying to, to lay the foundation of the market. But the growth we've seen over the last three years was just significant. So we decided to double down on the market and found also the first sales team here. And Warsaw just being the, the economical capital also of, uh, of the region, it was a natural choice for us to be here. Mm -hmm. So your operations in Warsaw are connected to the uh, services provided to the Polish companies or uh, companies op uh, operating in Poland or for the region or globally or you pan-European? So the engineering team is globally. They mm -hmm. work on very important parts of the, of the product as, for example, our data sharing capabilities. Mm -hmm. um, the sales team here in Warsaw is responsible for the entirety of CE with a very strong focus on Poland being the strongest market of the region. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What we need uh, is also to, to maybe a little explanation on what is actually the data cloud, if you could tell us, you know, in a simple word. <laughs> uh, happy, happy that you asked. Um, essentially, it's two components. So um, if I look at the data cloud, so the first part is platform or technology. So what we allow our clients to do is to put all the data they have into any cloud they want. We run on all three data uh, hyperscalers and we have multiple deployment zones across the globe. So then you have all your data in the cloud, which is very cheaply stored and very easily to access. So the next point is, how do I, how do I get it? How can I analyze it? And we allow their teams to use any programming language they want. They can use um, Scala, Python, or just pure SQL to actually get to the data. So in the last part of the data cloud is um, we call it uh, workload separation, uh, separation of compute from compute, um, which essentially means that every use case that is trying to do something there has their own resources and they're not competing for each other. So think about, we have a customer in the UK that delivers food, takeaway, right? Mm -hmm. Their busiest time is the lunch break Monday lunch break in London city center. So theoretically what they had to do is they have like 50, 60 analysts coming in in the morning trying to crunch the data of the weekend to get the offers out before the lunch break. And because um, all these people are competing for the same pot of resources, they had to come earlier and earlier and earlier into the office. So they started actually coming in at 5 a.m. Um, Snowflake's architecture allows them to have everybody have their own resources 
and run the, uh, run the queries in the time they want. Mm -hmm. So what that means is you have all your data, any kind of format, you can access it as you want with unlimited resources. We break down the internal data silos within your company, right? Mm -hmm. But the problem you have is if you do a business decision, it needs to stand trial in the real world. And then we come into, I don't have all the data that is available out there. I need to get external data in. So we connected our roughly six, 7,000 customers with each other and allowed them to share data. Okay, so well, now let's take a look on the perspective of the, uh, of the market. You know, how, how do you see the market uh, today and uh, how do you forecast uh, uh, the market to grow? And where, what, what are the factors actually behind the, the growth? Yeah, um, it's kind of interesting. So when you introduced, when you did the intro and you said the Polish cloud computing market grew by 30% and is expected to, um, to grow by another 30%, I prepped for the interview yesterday and I, let, I read 20% so you can see how it's, ex uh, how it's accelerating. Mm -hmm. um, we do think that um, Poland or Eastern Europe as, as, as a whole can become one of the strongest regions for Snowflake within Europe. Mm -hmm. um, for a multitude of reasons. Um, I spoke about the amazing talent pool you have here. When I compare it, I worked the last three years for Snowflake in Germany and my German friends might uh, uh, may, may, may forgive me for that. Um, when you look at the digital stage of most of the companies here in Poland compared with Germany, they're just two steps ahead. You have a large you have a large national market, so um, mm -hmm. it's, it's not just the pure outsourcing, nearshoring part, but there are companies like Zabka, for example, we spoke about that. A lot of the Polish banks that serve the market here have a lot of own decision power and actually uh, a thirst for technology. So we expect to double within size over the next year and then keep on, get, keep on that growth. You said that uh, the Polish companies are two steps ahead. Yes, yes really. I do because think actually, so. I thought that you know that there was a mem in the internet. Uh, before, I mean, when COVID started, uh, yeah. and there was you know the question: Who is responsible for your digital transformation within your company? <laughs> CEO, that. CTO, or COVID? And I was actually thinking that Polish companies are quite behind. So you you don't see it that way. I would disagree. Um, so. We need, to, we need to differ a little bit. So certainly the cloud adoption in Germany is, is a little bit ahead of Poland. But mm -hmm. um, when I see about digital services being provided, it starts with um, interaction with the government or um, my account or payment solutions, etc. I do think that Polish companies are ahead of most of, um, of the Western competitors or the Western peers. Mm -hmm. um, talking about the cloud adoption, I think there's still a way to go, but we see that um, we see that we're on the verge of, of getting there. So Google opened the first data center in Warsaw. Microsoft is supposed to be next. There are some rumors about what AWS is going to be doing. These companies don't invest billions of dollars for no reason, right? Um, and if you look at, um, at the meme you said, I, I, liked it. I liked it a lot and I thought a lot about it. And um, I think it's, it's kind of like all of them to a certain extent. Um, it depends where the companies were for, on a maturity rate. Um, we had an event yesterday with, with uh, Zabka, who are probably one of our 10 most advanced customers globally. And one example they brought is that when a, a big part of their sales are the hot dogs in, these, in their stores. And mm -hmm. when the first lockdown, when the pandemic hit, at least obviously the sales went down. So what they started doing is they used data to run every half an hour new targeted marketing or advertising campaigns to get the people back into the shops and buy the hot dogs. And by that actually got the sales up again. So who was it there? Was it COVID that initiated the campaigns or was it maybe the CDO that introduced the technology before? I think it's a bit of both. So he used the opportunity, actually, yes. Exactly. So he were looking for the solution in the situation yeah. when the problems appeared. Okay, yeah. so but uh, so when you talk to the... Com of course, Zabka is a very innovative uh, yes. company. I mean, no matter from which perspective you look at the company, it's it's really true. But in general, if you look on the Polish market or your potentials, uh, potential clients, uh, you, you see this understanding that this is the way to go. And the I faster do. you move, the faster you will achieve your goals. I do. I do. Mm -hmm. um, I do see it. Um, I think um, a big challenge still or a big obstacle companies have to overcome is, is regulation or the fear of regulation because there is, no, there is no local regulation that forbids, for example, Polish banks to go into the cloud, right? Mm -hmm. um, but we have similar discussions that we had a couple of years back in Germany or the UK where it starts, well, I'm not allowed to move data into the cloud and then, well, I'm not allowed to move data outside of the country and now we're, well, data has to reside within the EU, which is, which is true. Mm -hmm. And it's more, 
the the fear of um, let's say grown institutions to go through that way, deal with the regulators, and yeah, execute that process once to get there. Mm -hmm. um, that is, I think, the biggest last obstacle that is here, and we see it. We see it crumbling. Mm -hmm. Well, I also understand that you know, as this type of products become more advanced, it also goes in line with this all cybersecurity issues and in terms of the uh, safe of the data, right? Because that's yeah. the, the major concern, I believe, especially if you mention the national institutions or financial institutions, right? Yeah, but um, I, it's an interesting argument, which which I don't buy completely. Because mm -hmm. let's take let's take Dino. Who do you think has a better cybersecurity department, Google or Dino? Mm -hmm. So, okay, the answer is right there, right? Mm -hmm. But in terms of your forecast uh, of your growth uh, here in Poland or, or, or in Europe, uh, you mentioned, of course, uh, financial sector, Żabka is retail. So do you have some particular sectors that, that you are targeting or you see the, the, the biggest space to grow? So globally, retail is, is, is one of our sweet spots. It's a, mm -hmm. a data-driven economy or it's a data-driven sector um, that is not as heavily regulated as finance. Mm -hmm. um, in general, we... And when I look at the Polish economy, I think the, the strong suits we have here are obviously the utility companies we have uh, quite a few of. And um, again, looking at Germany over the last three years, I think every German utility company is on Snowflake for various reasons. I mean, mm -hmm. utility, you have IoT as a, uh, as a big use case, you have energy trading, which is close to finance. So that is certainly a sector to go after. Retail is, is very important, um, finance, but Poland also has a very, very active tech scene. I mean, you have um, companies like Huge Games or Gamester and, and, and many more mm -hmm. that are at the forefront of digital innovation and are using tools like Snowflake and others to, to get mm -hmm. further ahead. So I wouldn't pick one particular sector. Okay. We have a verticalization globally because mm -hmm. it's the same platform but different questions to be asked. But we're going after all sectors at the same time right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, well, how companies benefit from embracing cloud solutions? So if we can now smoothly move to the product itself and okay. your product as well. Okay. Um, so there's a... Uh, there is a misbelief, I think, that um, the reason for going to the cloud is because it's cheaper. Mm -hmm. Well, it is cheaper at the beginning if you do a one-to-one -one comparison most of the time. But at some stage, you will. most companies notice that they spend more in the cloud than they did on-premise, but just because they can do more. Mm -hmm. So if I take it away from Snowflake and just cloud in general, I think main reasons you want to do more things faster, things that you couldn't do before because you didn't have the resources or the applications and you want to do it faster because you suddenly have, well, you have your car tuned, you have unlimited resources. Snowflake offers you a little bit more. I don't want to dive into the platform as mm -hmm. such, right? Um, but if you look at the, at the data cloud, it's, it's two components. It's, it's technology where we say, put all your data into any cloud, um, access it any way you want, what, whatever language you want to use to attach it, mm -hmm. and with un unlimited resources. But the, the more interesting part to a certain extent is content and network. We connected all our six, 7,000 customers globally with each other and allow them to share data with each other without the need to move it. And then you suddenly get very, very interesting concepts. Um, when you think about data being the new oil, um, and you being able to to use external data sources to do data drift to do your decisions. Think mm -hmm. of a logistics company. You can have all the data of the world, or you can have all your data in house. You understand how your trucks are going. You understand how the routes are going normally. You understand how your drivers are, how your customers are usually behaving. But you still need to understand what is the traffic right now, and mm -hmm. well, how is the weather tomorrow on the Atlantic if I ship a container over there? And these are external sources, and this is something that can only be provided in the cloud in real time without any barriers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so, but could you give us, like, I think that more examples, like you mentioned this logistics exactly, but how, how, how in practice does this work? Or, I don't know, Jabka you mentioned or any other Let's go. Uh, yeah, let's go to Jabka. So, um, so some examples, some case studies briefly, but, you know, just to, to have the imagination uh, what stands behind all these benefits. Happy to do so. So let's look at Jabka, what Jabka is doing with, um, with the solution as, mm -hmm. um, as such. You have direct access to your client because usually you don't have it. You always have a middleman. And you can directly see how, am I, how are my marketing campaigns impacting my sales in different areas. And I can start in real time to adjust these campaigns and get more, well, more buck for the bank. Mm 
right? Mm -hmm. um, this is when we talk about data sharing very close to home, Jabka. So it's very transparent, actually, also. It's very, yeah, it's very transparent mm -hmm. and it's very fast. That's, mm -hmm. uh, that's the whole point of it. Um, if we go a little bit more into, into the tech part of it, um, Siemens Energy is a client of us in, um, uh, in Germany. So what they produce, they produce these huge gas turbines um, within mm -hmm. the power plants. And what they do is they have thousands of sensors that are connected to these turbines and collect data all the time. And they sell services to their customers predictive maintenance, right? This is the right time you should get a technician in or okay. should replace something there or whatever. And the cloud actually allows them to analyze this data, have enough resources to analyze this data, transform this data uh, as fast as they need to and get a single source of truth to really understand what is the health of the power plant and by that well, essentially make more money by selling these services at the right time. Mm -hmm. So actually I would say that, you know, the technology helps a lot but then the, there is a human factor in terms of because you have to know what are you are looking for actually and yes. in, so so there yes. is a space for a human factor <laughs> um yes definitely <laughs> i mean every every successful project uh, project has three aspects so mm -hmm. yeah you have culture you have to have a use case and then you have to te have to have technology and if one of these three is missing usually the whole project won't work mm -hmm. Okay, so you're looking with optimism. So what are your perspectives in terms of the growth and, uh, in, and in terms of the business uh, in Poland? For Snowflake itself. Mm -hmm. Like I yes. said, we, um, I can't give concrete numbers. I'm not at liberty to take sure. them out, but we, plan, we definitely plan to grow significantly, significantly over the next years, at least doubling the size towards next year, and then we'll see what's coming. So, uh, so I understand you mean also the number of clients and the number of uh, financial growth. Exactly. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you very much. Good luck with this. From what you are saying, I mean, I think that's the obvious and the only way to go. I mean, you have to tackle uh, technologies and plug into this cloud uh, solutions because otherwise uh, you will be left behind by your competitors. Exactly. <laughs> thank you very much thank for you. the discussion.